Julia. Hi, Matilda. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome to The Greatest Myths. This is uh, the podcast of Julia Wilkins and me, Matilda Ross. Um, we are, uh, we work together in Amsterdam and we started this podcast as a way to explore our love of knitting and craft related things a little more deeply. So thank you for joining us. Uh, today we are going to be talking about New Year New Skill, so a, almost like a resolution but a little bit different. We're going to be sharing some feeds that are inspiring us at the moment. We'll talk a little bit about what we're working on and then at the end of the show we'll reveal a favourite three uh, that we'll get to later. Julia, would you like to take us away with some New Year New Skill? What are you going to be working on in 2021? Oh. 2021 well first of all I want to learn so much in this year it's going to be for me the year to focus on uh, improving some technical things but mm. also um, just the way I approach my project and um, the way I publish them I want well there's endless things we'll, we'll share them the rest of the year each time I take another step but the technique the knitting technique that I'd like to learn this year is the coconut sweater um, uh, approach mm. and that's a different way of um, knitting your sweater seamlessly it starts with a little um, piece on the back and then you increase and you you make actually you make like the back of the shoulder and then you come over the shoulder and you attach the sleeves in one go and it brings a really nice tailored shoulder Ooh. and also it has the benefit that you don't see any seams here I mean I really like raglan sweaters but sometimes this line can be very dominant and I've been told that not everybody finds it flattering for there and they have a a workbook or uh, movies yeah. how are you how are you planning to learn this one so she has a she has a great book published uh, which also includes some patterns that you could just follow but uh, she has a she also has like a workbook where you could file your numbers that you have um, that you've calculated for your body measurements right. because big benefit of that method is that you can also completely tailor make it to your to fit your body me measurements and it's very flexible so there's a workbook and then there's also workshops that you can follow but um i'll start with the book mm -hmm. and as far as i've read it i think it's pretty easy for me to understand and uh, and the rest she has a great website i mean i coconuts has i think some of the most straightforward instruction videos uh uh, that I have come across. They're crisp, they're clear, they're not too much talk. And how about you? How about your uh, next technique? This is tricky. I'm, I'm still tossing up between two, which is fine because I'm still in the depths of all of the things that I'm knitting, so I'm not quite ready to start the new thing yet. But I am tossing up between stacked stitches uh, from Zandy Peters. And I've bought a pattern in of anticipation of that so I'm, I'm ready to jump I just need to commit to it uh, and then the uh, the technique that I'm really really interested in uh, this year is Rosamina which is Estonian color work technique where the floats come to the front and it looks like a lot like an embroidered stitch um, and I think from what I understand is that it's that is its history it was it was designed to emulate um, an embroidered stitch and Alex Bird is a an Estonian knitwear designer who I think she lives in the UK now and she has published several beautiful patterns that use this technique uh, most recently one of um, in the liner the most recent liner sweater, uh, magazine and yeah. as soon as I saw that I was like oh yeah that's so delicious so that's probably going to be my 2021 sweater I think I'm just in indecisive mode I think it's I haven't quite na nailed it down yet but we'll get there and yeah. uh, and like I said I've, I've still got lots of other things 
keeping me busy. I just need to get off, clear the plate and uh, we'll get there eventually. Talking of which, what's your current project? <laughs> I've I, nearly done. It's nearly, <laughs> I, uh, I am on the hem oh. of my Matilda sweater. I was talking last time about doing the turned up cuffs and uh, in that contrast neon peach colorway from- I love uh, that. Which I, I, I'm very, oh. very sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did a bit of, I did the collar pick up it in like late at night and I did a bit of a crappy job uh, and you can see it's come through on the, on the right side. So I think I'm gonna unpick that and uh, try to just do that all over again. I might even do the last row of the collar in the um, yes. color from so it doesn't show through. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I did okay with the sleeves. I just did a shit job on the, <laughs> on the collar. Okay. But I think this will probably be done this week. How about I you can't do? wait to see it. Oh, me too. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Uh, well, I, yeah, I'm still working on several things that I uh, I, I cannot talk about. So I've just um, finished the body of my uh, Richter sweater that I showed you before. Uh, it's just the final stitches of the cast off. Yeah. And um, I'm really happy with it. I made it a bit longer, this yeah. one. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think it's gonna be very comfortable that way. And uh, funnily, I saw on your sweater that you just showed us that you have a twisted rib, I think. Yes, I always do. I'm addicted. Um, yeah. I like it because it makes the rib, there we go, makes the rib nice and uh, tight, crisp. I do, do a two by one ribbing, so one per two knit stitches. And the second of the knit stitch completely fell towards the purl stitch. Mm. So it kind of fell apart and it didn't, also it didn't bounce back into the ribbing that like I wanted. And what I um, usually do then is I, when I start the ribbing, I do a short row and reverse the whole knitting. So I actually knit on the wrong side of the sweater. And then I show you here. And then I, uh, I purl two stitches and I knit one and I twist that knit stitch. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I I know what you mean. Yeah, and that way, yeah, and that, that way, um, I don't know if you see it, but you can see that it's kind of, it has a good, it's it more, has a good bounce. Yeah. Then what you find, the two knit stitches are really two knit stitches and there's one purl and there's a clear difference between the knit and the purl. Mm. And it still has to be blocked, but um, so that's cute. fine. I love it. Mm -hmm my little uh, ribbing hack. I'm curious to hear what your, who is your favorite feed at the moment? What's inspiring you on Instagram? Who is So I, it's all Rosamina all the time for me at the moment. Alex Bird is my inspiring feed. I've been doing a deep dive into her past posts and also into her website, which is really full of great, information talking about it now it, it's making me realize how committed I am to actually <laughs> making the Rosamina my, my technique for 2021 so I think it's uh, just a matter of time yeah um, but yeah she's really generous with her knowledge her color work is just oh so delicious she do she writes patterns um, often for mittens and I like a mitten I have cold hands often, so I've, um, yeah, really, that's who I'm, I'm focusing on, Alex Bird, for the moment. How about you? The feed that I really like looking at is uh, Lisa Congdon. She's a illustrator, actually. She's, she doesn't have anything to do with knitting. She has everything to do with color. Yeah. And uh, illustrations, she uses, um, her. if you look at her feed, it instantly makes it, at least me it makes me happy she uses she uses bold bright colors but she also um her approach to the whole 
medium of Instagram, I think is just very positive, mm -hmm. uh, full of enthusiasm. And she uses the medium in all the good work, uh, uh, ways that they are, you know, because we now on the weekend, we had the situation at the Capitol and then you see all the bad ways that the medium can be used. But the way she uses it, she's uh, also doing activist work for civil rights and, uh, but she's also just spreading a lot of love and uh, optimism and she shares her personal experience and struggles, but in a very, in a way that I can also do something with it. It's not, you know, it's not specifically her personal things. It's in a way that I can just relate them just as well to myself and my own life. And when, I'm, when I look at her drawings, I think this could be a great color work detail somewhere. Yeah, for sure. When I was preparing this edition, uh, I came across her because of our three favorite things. Yes. The top three. Okay. Because our this month's top three are are our three favorite guiding words. But basically, the idea was that we start a new year and we maybe start with fresh plans and uh, we sometimes need things to guide us towards these, to give us some uh, inspiration, hope, or just some energy, positive energy. Yeah. And, um, and she is the one who gave me one of my favorite guiding words, and uh, which is, you can find it on her grid. Um, it's, uh, it says, you are not your mistakes. And uh, I thought that was a really nice idea. I might have sometimes the tendency to focus too, too much on my mistakes when, you, um, when I'm doing things. And, you know, if you do that, you're like taking more and more energy out of whatever you're doing. If I look at my pro, pro tip, I can tell you, I can actually tell you a couple of mistakes I made in this. And sometimes, uh, sometimes it's worth, worth it to go back and sometimes you just have to embrace the mistake and go forward and who cares you know it doesn't matter if it follows the pattern a hundred percent it's exactly. not at all important and um number two of my uh, guiding words uh, is if it doesn't fit you just rip it and um that's I mean, then going back, if, you know, I've had so many situations that I started a thing, a whole sweater, a whole bloody color work sweater, and I came up here, bottom up, and I came up here, and I, the whole time I was thinking, like, hmm, I don't think it really works, and you just want to go on, you just, ah, it will, it will, it'll block out, block out. <laughs> if, you know trust your gut feeling uh rip it if you don't fit it it's not worth it at the end of the day it has to fit you mm -hmm. you have to be really happy to wear it exactly. and then um my all time a number one guiding word has been for i think already uh maybe 20 30 years has been enjoy yourself it's later than you think uh, it's I, I know it from a, a ska band called The Specials and it used to be the final song in the club that I used to go to. <laughs> so before they started to kick everybody out, they <laughs> so put on the music and that song and um, we all went for a last dance. Yeah. As a, when I was in my 20s, I was in a really bad car accident. Nothing happened. You know, I, nobody was injured. But at this second that this other car hit my car and my, my car started to tumbleweed through a four lane street in the middle of Frankfurt. Jesus. My, this is just like my, my word was, the only word that I had in my head was one big no, no, this is not happening. And since then I've decided, you know, I need to be, not, I don't want to say dramatic, I need to be prepared, but you need to, I want to be 
in that moment, if once it's happening, I want to be ready to say, okay, I've, I think I've pulled a lot out of my life and I've, I've, I've tried to enjoy every moment, the good ones and the bad ones, just make the best out of it. And then, yeah, I will never, I will never, you know, I, it will never happen that the car hits me and I say like, yes, come to me, <laughs> it's time. But just this, yeah, you have to, uh, you have to try uh, to make the best out of your life. So why? Yeah. So with that, my my first one is um, from two journalists uh, who I love and adore, uh, Aminatu So and Anne Friedman, and they came up with the shine theory. And the shine theory says, I don't shine if you don't shine. And I find that that's been really useful for helping me uh, guide my energy and um, feel good about supporting the work of my friends and my colleagues and people in my slightly wider circle. I think that there's a tendency in our culture to be individualistic and there's a narrative about women um, being competitive and catty that I think doesn't play out in my life. And I take active steps as often as I can to make sure it never plays out in my life because I think we rise together. So shine theory is one of my guiding principles. I love that. I think it's very profound and I can confirm that you, uh, that you apply that, that approach. Yeah, I, I think I try my best to do so. It's, uh, it's important to me. Um, and then the next one I came across when I was in, I think in high school studying art or maybe in first year of university um, from the artist and art educator, sister Cora Kent. I don't know if you know her, she's a printmaker, American from sort of the 60s, 70s, 80s was her big practice time. Uh, anyway, she, she did a lot of art education and had rules for her art room, which all of the rules I think are really applicable to life. But number four is the one that I uh, keep with me closely at all times, which is consider everything an experiment. And that I'm, I have some perfectionist tendencies and I tend to overthink things a bit. And I think if I keep everything an experiment, then it's easier for me to go with the flow and experience life in the moment and not try and get too up in my own head about making decisions. And then the last one uh, is kind of, it's not a phrase, it's, it's three words. So my, uh, my dad's cousin, my, I guess he's like an uncle, uh, is a silversmith and he makes for all of the women in our family a little shield. And then each shield has three golden balls on it, which represent three words that you use to guide your life. And he gives you the first word and then you have to come up with the other two yourself. Uh, so the first word, for, I think it's for everyone, he might correct me if I'm wrong, is humility. And then the other two words that I chose are courage and optimism. Uh, so the, those three words are just trying to keep uh, in mind at, at tricky points in life, uh, I think are ideal and will always hopefully lead me down the right path. It was lovely to see you and chat and, um, and we'll see you next month. Yeah, absolutely. I'll see you at work, but we'll see all of you guys next month. <laughs> yeah. Tell us if you would like us to talk about anything specific or yeah. if you have questions and we'll put all the information of the people and feeds we talked about in um, somewhere here or somewhere there. Sounds good. Okay. And, uh, and if you have guiding words, we'd love to hear them as well. It's something that we, both of us collect. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's really good.